Chapter 5 The ice-cold water was a shock to his skin, enough to make malice catch his breath as he scrubbed the dried blood from his chest and arms, but not quite enough to banish the crawling sensation of worms coiling through his flesh. He fought to keep his gorge down against the squirming sensation filling his mouth and caressing his tongue. I do not like this, Silar Thornblood said. It's reckless. The tall Druki stood by his lord's side, his long face grimmer than usual. How do we know she can be trusted? Unable to stand it any more, Malice plunged his face into the freezing, pink-tinged water. The searing cold banished the lingering memories of his sister's embrace, if only for a moment. He came up for air, gasping, unsettled, but for a moment the master of his own skin. She can't be trusted, he said, wiping his face on a towel offered by Salar. But for the moment, she and I have a common objective, stealing Uriel's precious relic and seizing the power it protects. Nagaira can be counted on to ensure her own interests are met, and no more. The Highborn's bedchamber was a crowded place in the wake of the evening's assassination attempt and the sudden meeting with his sister. Along with Selar, Lunara and Arleth Van paced and brooded at different points around the small, dimly lit chamber, clearly unhappy with the outcome of the night's events. The Druki woman stood at one of the chamber's narrow windows, watching the night begin to fade in a slow ebb from black to grey. Hagraith was called the City of Shadows for a reason. Surrounded by steep mountainsides, the bottom of the valley felt the direct touch of sunlight for only a couple of hours each day, and even then only on rare, cloud-free days in the summer. For much of the year, Hagraith was wrapped in a perpetual twilight. Far below in the city proper, she could see the faint, flickering gleam of witchfire globes guttering like stars amid the currents of caustic night fog roiling in the streets. Salar is right, she said thoughtfully. You are being too hasty, my lord. There are too many unknowns. Too many things that can go wrong. We do not even know where this temple is. Somewhere in the chaos wastes. We could be gone for years. If we ever come back at all. Nagaira claims that the relic will point to the location of the temple, Malice said. And I would rather be raiding the wastes than waiting here for the next temple assassin to take my head. But surely we can wait a few more days at least. Spend some coin and see what we can learn about Uriel's tower to make a better plan. We don't have a few days. We have to strike while Uriel is out of his lair. We think he'll be at the temple for the next several nights, but the only night we can count on for certain is tonight. Isn't that right, Arleth? Arleth Van stirred from the shadows in the far corner of the room. With his heavy black cloak pulled about him, and the top of the broad cowl hanging down over his face, he was nearly invisible in the darkness. Yes, he said reluctantly. Every supplicant in the city must attend the veneration ceremonies tonight, which last from sunset to sunrise. Malice caught Lunara, eyeing Arleth speculatively. Many in the warband suspected that the retainer had been involved with the temple at some point in his past. Arleth had a good reason not to discuss his life before coming to Hag Grafe, and Malice kept what he knew to himself. It was a worthwhile trade to gain a retainer of Arleth's particular skills. So you see, we've little time to prepare, the Highborn interjected, and my enemies are moving against me. If things get too far out of hand, it's possible that Lurhan will exile me, or worse, rather than risk drawing the entire family into a blood feud. I do not have the resources, the, the power, to fight off these threats. It will be difficult enough just to equip this expedition, much less fight a house war against an alliance of petty nobles. Malice pulled on the sleeping robe 
and went to the polished ashwood table, near the foot of the bed. He picked up a jug of looted Bretonian wine and filled the goblet standing alongside it. If this uh, relic is half as fearsome as Nagaira seems to think it is, things will be very different here upon our return. Do you truly plan to share it with her? Silar asked. Only if I must, Malice admitted, sipping his wine. And only until I'm certain I can master it myself. If I think I can wield it without her, well, the wastes are a dangerous place, aren't they? Lunara nodded to herself, spinning a web of stratagems and contingencies in her mind. How many men will she take with her? Six, including that throat-cutter Dalvar. I'll be bringing six as well, including you and Van here. Selah, Dolthaik, and Arleth Van will remain here with the rest of the warband to keep watch over the property I have left. I don't doubt Uriel will retaliate in some fashion once he learns of the theft. Don't take Van here, Silar growled. He'll betray you if he can. I agree, Lenara said. Especially after your retribution on the road from Clark Harand. He hates you more now than ever. Precisely why I want him where I can keep my eye on him, Malice replied. He will keep his oath to the letter, to the last minute of the very last day. That's more than a month away. If we're still in the wastes by then, it might be easier just to kill him. But until then, he's one more sword I can use to achieve my ends. Lenara folded her arms and turned back to the window, clearly unhappy with the idea. Do we take the Noglier then? Yes, Malice said. I'll take tooth and claw over a horse's hooves any day. Besides, they can carry more gear and move further each day than a pack of trained horses. They'll also need to eat a lot more, Lunara pointed out. Malice chuckled. <laughs> Where we're going, I don't think we'll lack for bodies to feed to the cold ones. Dolphake will have them saddled and ready in the stables as soon as we emerge from Uriel's tower. I don't plan on staying here one more minute than I must once the deed is done. I'm more interested in hearing how you're going to get in and out of Uriel's tower, Silar said. Malice poured a second cupful of wine. No one knows for certain how many servants Uriel has, nor how many retainers. He gets many of them from the temple, and they all wear those heavy robes and masks. He could have twenty or two hundred. Worse, Nagaira is certain his lair will be heavily guarded by magical wards and bound spirits. Ta, even monsters, perhaps. Ta. The Highborn glanced at Arleth Van. The two locked eyes for a moment, then the retainer shrugged. It is possible, Arleth Van said. None but the priestesses know how far Uriel has progressed in the mysteries of Cain. He could be capable of a great many terrible things. It is even possible that his lair may no longer be entirely of this realm. Lunara took a step towards the cowled retainer. What does that mean? Arleth Van's head bowed. Malice could see the tension in the line of his muscular shoulders and the stillness of his frame. Go on, Arleth, the highborn prodded. I can't say for certain. I don't even understand it fully myself. But there are places in the great temples... Deep places where only the most holy may go, that bear witness to ancient rites and observances. Only the finest sacrifices are made there. There is no word spoken in that place that is not an offering to the Lord of Murder. It is a place where the highest priests go to look upon the visage of Cain and his realm of slaughter. They thin the weave between worlds until sometimes it becomes difficult to tell what is of this realm and what is not. Lenara frowned. Now you're speaking in riddles. No, Lenara, 
He isn't, Malice thought. But it's for the best that you don't understand, else I might have a mutiny on my hands. Considering the implications was like a cold knife twisting in his gut. Are you saying that his sanctum could be such a place? Arleth Van looked up at the Highborn's voice. The face beneath the hood was guarded, except for his eyes. They were bleak. It is possible, he said. Nothing is certain with one such as him. He is bound by no law in this world or the next. From what you're both describing, this sounds like a fool's errand. Not so, Malice said. Nagaira knows of a hidden way into the tower from the burrows. The burrows? Enough, woman. She will lead us into the burrows from an entrance elsewhere in the fortress, and then up into Uriel's storerooms. She says she has the talismans that will allow us to pass unnoticed through his wards and calm his unnatural sentries. Since she will be with us the entire time, I have no doubt that she is certain of their power. And if she's wrong, my lord? Once inside, he continued, ignoring her question, we will kill any servants or guards we encounter on the way to Uriel's sanctum. If the Dark Mother smiles on us, that won't be necessary. Ideally, we will be able to slip in and out with no one the wiser. Nevertheless, once we get inside the sanctum, we will have to move very quickly. Now, Nagara does not know exactly what this relic looks like. Lenara started to speak, her eyes going wide, but Malice silenced her with a sharp glare. But... She is certain she will know it when she sees it. We will search the Sanctum, locate the relic, and depart the same way we arrived. With luck, we should not be inside the tower for more than half an hour at most. Once we are back in the burrows, we should be able to reach the stables within minutes and be out of the hag and on the spear road within the hour. By the time Uriel returns and finds the relic gone, we will be leagues away. Leaving us to bear the brunt of his wrath, Silar said, his voice full of dread. Lenara shook her head. I do not like this, my lord. It stinks too much of misadventure. If one thing goes wrong, the whole plan could unravel. And then where would we be? Not much worse off than we are now, Lenara. Malice replied coldly. The temple has been promised my head, and if my suspicions are correct, Uriel was responsible for the ambush on the slaver's road. No, I will not sit here and wait for the kiss of the axe. Uriel owes me a debt of ruin, and I mean to collect it tonight. If I die in the attempt, then I will do it with a blade in my hands and blood in my teeth. Now, go, Malice said, draining his cup once more. Rest yourselves. We meet at Nagaira's tower tonight, after the rising of the fog. As one, the retainers bowed and moved to the door. Silar was the last to depart. Do not tarry long in the wastes, my lord, he said with a rueful grin. There may be nothing left of us upon your return. I know. Noble Salah, Malice answered. But fear not, I have a long, long memory and a pitiless heart. Whatever evil Uriel wreaks on you, I will repay him a hundredfold. Silar paused at the doorway, considering the highborn's words. Then, reassured, he left to see his duties.